Diane, it's 8.27 a.m. on a brisk Tuesday morning. I woke up to what sounded like the bellowing of bullfinches singing the loneliest song in the distance. Diana got me thinking about the theme music to the legendary TV show, Twin Peaks. I decided to investigate this music further. After I enjoy what I can only assume is the most exquisitely roasted cup of black water, this side of the Mississippi. Okay, so let's dive right into the main theme of Twin Peaks, one of the most recognizable and iconic theme songs of all time. And really there are two parts to this piece. There is the composition and the arrangement from Angelo Badalamente, and then you've also got the, the actual playing and the synthesizers themselves played by Kenny Landrum. What I love about the sound of, of Twin Peaks and, and, and these pieces is that they really reflect the advancements in synthesizer technology. You know, we started to see sampling become available for the first time. So you can see that in, in synthesizers like the Emu Emulator 2 here, as well as the Roland D50, and of course, the Yamaha DX7. And to me, as a synth player, what really separates this generation of gear from the Roland Junos and the Prophet Fives and the Moogs uh, of, of, of the earlier period is you gain a tremendous amount of expressiveness and, and realism in the sounds that you can generate as opposed to the purely electronic sounds uh, of the previous generation. But what you lost more often than not was the really hands-on control. If you look at these synths, you know, there's not a lot of knobs not a lot of buttons. It really was more about the playing and the expressiveness. Okay, so let's start with the most recognizable and iconic sound of the Twin Peaks theme, which is the guitar part. Now, many folks probably assume that it is a real guitar, and in a way it is, but it's a sampled guitar. And so the story goes that Kenny Landrum, when he was actually playing the piece, uh, sampled one snippet of the guitar part from the original piece written by Julie Cruz Falling that this is based on and and this is the piece of gear itself. The original sound as we mentioned was uh, sampled from the Julie Cruz song Falling so we don't have the exact sound but I was able to find something pretty darn close, and uh, it sounds like this. Okay, so that may not be the most exciting sound I've ever heard out of a synthesizer. Keep in mind though, back in the day, that would have been pretty mind blowing to be able to have that kind of realistic sound at your fingertips. Really the art here and the magic is in the way that it's processed in the, in the eventual arrangement. So what we've done is taken a mix of vintage gear, uh, some newer equipment, some, some production within Ableton, brought it all together into this Ableton session, and you can hear the end result of the processing on the track, and it sounds like this. For those at home wondering, all we really did there is take, again, the original sound and apply uh, some tremolo to it to give it that kind of vibey 50s kind of sound, uh, a little bit of reverb on it, and just a little bit of processing really brings a pretty static sample to life. The story goes that David Lynch and Angelo Badalamente composed the entire soundtrack on a Rhodes piano. The entire soundtrack features a lot of Rhodes sounds that were actually all from the Yamaha DX7, again, the FM synthesizer that really revolutionized synthesis in the mid to late 80s and in through the 90s. subtle um, walking kind of baseline pattern there 
being played. It's really a classic example of the types of tones that you get out of an FM synthesizer, whether something vintage or something a little bit more modern like the Korg Volca FM. Okay, so now we start to hear these just beautiful strings. The original sounds were played on a Roland MKS-70, really one of the last Roland analog synthesizers, really beautiful for pads and strings. To replicate it, we're actually using a free plugin uh, that's available on Reverb Sync, which is a recreation of those later Roland synthesizer models to get these types of sounds here. There's also a low synth bass tone, again from the same Roland uh, MKS-70 style plugin. Actually not a whole lot to it, just a couple of saw waves down to the 16 foot range with a little bit of reverb to kind of fill in the bottom. Again, from a composition perspective, you can just hear this kind of building, building, building up to the ultimate crescendo here. So, Diane, one mystery answered, and yet I can't shake the lingering feeling that there's something left still to investigate. 